Another week of streaming from home options, starting with True History of the Kelly Gang. And this is the story of Ned Kelly, who is an infamous Australian outlaw. And I like vaguely knew that because I remember having seen a 2003 film with Orlando Bloom and Heath Ledger in it. I mean, like, okay, cool. I, I, I obviously I don't remember a ton since then, but I am aware that Ned Kelly was an outlaw in Australia. And I think the biggest problem with this movie is that it almost requires you to know that and requires you to be able to fill in the legend of his scope and that, you know, he's a character that persists today because the problem is it starts you know you start you start with ned kelly as a kid and you see why he kind of becomes who he becomes but you never really get to the transformation or the way that they do the transformation of him becoming this outlaw doesn't quite jive for me and it doesn't quite get to that point of like why is this so legendary you don't get to feel or see kind of the um external uh rise of his legend it's just very much about his journey which is fine in some senses but At the same time, the film also wants you to be like, oh, isn't this accomplishment so grandiose because, oh, he's a legendary character and this this action should obviously be considered, you know, X, Y, Z. But I'm like, well, it's not obvious. You have to give us the materials to make it feel like we've gone on this journey and we understand why this these his and Ned Kelly's actions would be perceived as either impressive to one group or horrific to another group. And it never just quite gets there. The it, Ned Kelly is, as an adult, is played by George Mackey, McKay, uh, from 1917. And you can see he definitely went under a physical transformation for this. I'm not sure whether or not he filmed this before or after 1917, but you can see he, like, gets sinewy and muscly and, like, you know, he's a skinny guy, but he definitely, like, packed on some muscle for this, which I'm like, that's cool. And he he tries to physically embody this kind of machismo character, but I don't know if he always succeeds because I just see him as a scrawny dude. You've also got Russell Crowe, Nicholas Holt, S.C. Davis, Charlie Hunnam, and Thomas and McKenzie. And this movie is weirdly obsessed with male, the male form and junk and there's a lot of scenes in this movie of dudes just like carefully oh so slightly turned away from camera so you don't see the either if you you know juicy slash offending bits it's like okay here's a bunch of dudes just you know hanging out trouserless and i i was like i don't i'm not sure what the the goal of this is is it to like show them as physically impressive is it to show them as comfortable in their skin i don't know it was weird and at a certain point i was like wow they really like showing these like scenes but the thing is it gets almost distracting because you know they're trying to avoid showing and getting like a, a harder rating and it's already rated r so you know whatever but like they were like okay we have to avoid showing these bits and we're gonna make it very kind of apparent that we are not going to show this part of it and the fact that i am distracted by this and not paying attention to the story it, you know and it's not a particularly exciting way that they do it like is not a good sign towards the story i history movies based on history are hard and it's one of those things where like if it's something that if it's an event that's too well or a character that's too well known you know then you don't want to kind of lead the witness too much but if it's a character who might not be as well known or internationally especially like you might want to give a little more detail and a little more context and a little more feeling of why or how they're being perceived at the time like there's I get kind of annoyed at films that have like those end cards at the end and I'm like, this is the scope of this person's impact. I'm like, why wasn't this just included in the story? Like, why didn't you just, I don't understand. It's fine to check out again, rated R, very rated R, violent, bloody, you know, dude thigh. So keep that in mind with whoever's watching around you. I would say that this is a fine streaming from home option. Like, I don't know if I would have said, like, go see this in a theater, but I think that if you're going to watch it at home, like, I think that's totally fine. It's two hours. The first half went by really quickly. The second half dragged a little bit, which is a bummer. So I'm going to give this one 3.4 out of 5. I want to give a quick shout out to two other projects. Bad Education on HBO. If you have HBO or have a way of acquiring HBO or, you know, or internet savvy or whatever it may be. It's based also on a true story. And it's the story of a school district in, I guess, Long Island and, like, like, uh, I guess, uh, financial woes and questionable behavior. And it stars Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney, who are both, of course, amazing actors. It's a tight 108 minutes. It's it's worth your time and attention. You know, it'll go by very quickly. Bad education. If you have it, you know, I think it's worth checking out. And finally, the thing that I hope everybody watches is Never Have I Ever. It's a new show from Mindy Kaling on Netflix. And it's basically, it's in a similar vein to sex education, I would say. It, it's, I think I once I saw it described as like Fleabag, but for high schoolers, which it's not as far as Fleabag, but what I really appreciated as the lead character is a girl who is like forward thinking about sexuality. And, you know, it's, it's, we see this from a male perspective already where it's like, cool, you want to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whoever, and you want to get like laid and you want to do all these things and you have a checklist. And it also kind of reminds me a little bit of Booksmart. Um, it's, it's, 
it's actually very similar to Booksmart and that you have these very highly driven, educated characters who also happen to have hormones and be interested in people and that's perfectly normal and i think that's much more reflective of the experience that many people had in high school as opposed to the kind of like jocks cheerleaders you know whomever i think this is for the everybody else's and there's something to connect to uh the other aspect of it of course i love is there's a huge cultural element um they very much lean into she is an american but she comes from an indian family like straight up indian family and there's kind of as someone who is a, a child of an immigrant like i totally relate to and understand all this the expectations of you know how you behave versus how others are expected to behave the kind of restrictions sometimes that you go under like it's it's just a super funny fun uh sometimes a little frustrating but in a good way like it i get frustrated watching i would call them teen shows just because like i'm like oh man this is this brings me back like this brings me back to how petulant i was and how much of a pain in the ass i was and seeing it portrayed accurately on screen just makes me be like i'm sorry i probably owe my parents and my friends and whoever from that time my teachers from that time an apology but it's also perfectly normal behavior for that age so Never have I ever. It's funny. It's fun. It's, you know, sweet. Definitely go check it out.